guys. So this is actually going to be the first video in a series of videos I'm doing, kind of giving you some different examples and projects that you can do using the Halloween collection I announced in my last video. In today's video, we are going to be making and altering a tag, and I actually have the finished tag right here for you to kind of see. And I'm going to be giving you a step-by-step -step process on how I actually created that tag. As with most things on this channel, the format is quite a bit different than some of the videos I've done previously, but I hope you all enjoy regardless, and without further ado, let's get into it. So something that is fairly new to my collection of art supplies are reinforcement labels. Now many of you are probably already familiar with these. Typically, they are office supplies that are used to reinforce the holes on pieces of paper that have been three-hole punched, so that when you put them into a ring binder, the holes don't tear clean through, and instead remain looking fairly clean and neat looking. However, something I have recently discovered is the joy of making your own tags with these reinforcement labels. It's a very straightforward process, and that's what you're going to see me starting out this video Video doing. You simply cut a piece of paper to the size that you want, and that is one of the things that I love most about this technique. You can choose any size or pattern for your tag that you want. You cut some angled lines on the corners. I have actually freehanded this before, but in the case of this video, I did make a template where I measured out equal distances and then created my angles that way. You punch a hole, and I prefer to put the reinforcement label on both sides of the tag just for double the stability, and before you know it, in a matter of just a few minutes, you have a tag. With this paper specifically, I had kind of experimented and made a sample tag that I did like. However, what you will see me do a little later in this video is take some of the Recollections Halloween paper that I showed off in my Michaels haul and make a tag out of that instead, just because it seemed to fit my theme a little bit better. The next thing I do is I cut a piece of watercolor paper to a little bit smaller than the size of the tag. I personally find this to be one of the easiest ways to decorate a tag in a way that looks nice. Sometimes the shape of a tag can be kind of strange and oddly overwhelming, and giving yourself a rectangular surface that you're a little more familiar with can be extremely helpful. One of the things you're really going to see me do in this video is something that is very true to my process and that is change my mind a lot. You're going to see me take out some distress ink and ink one of the edges of this piece of watercolor paper before deciding that I want to stamp on it instead. The distress ink is in the color pumice stone and it will come back in later, but I just wanted to get the stamping out of the way first so that I could kind of blend it in with the inking. The stamp I am using is also from the Recollections line, which I also showed in that Michaels Hall video, and it is a little collection of bottles and beakers. I think it's one of my favorite stamps of the entire collection, and I liked the way that it looked when it was slightly offset, so I just lined it up so it was slightly off the edge of the piece of watercolor paper and stamped it. I also did my stamping with archival ink in Jet Black by Ranger. This is pretty much the only waterproof ink that I use for stamping, and it's always worked really well for me. And after that is stamped, you're going to see me pull the Pumice Stone Distress ink back out and ink the edges of both this little piece of watercolor paper and the edges of the tag itself. Next, I am taking out my words collage sheet that I talked about in my last video, my product line announcement video, and I'm trying to pick a phrase that I think goes with this tag. 
Just a reminder, my Halloween line goes live on September 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And after that collection has gone live, if you decide to purchase any of those items and create projects using them, like I am in this video, you can use the hashtag WOIProducts so that I'll be able to see what you come up with as well. I picked out a couple of little phrases I thought would work. The two specific ones being blood donors needed and pick your poison. And in addition to those two phrases, I also cut out the little ghost silhouette that is also included in this sheet. Mostly because the ghost is probably one of my favorite little bits of the collection and I've had a lot of fun reincorporating it over and over again. Next, you're going to see me set aside the tag itself, as well as the words and the ghost. And I'm going to basically paint this stamped image, but I'm going to be using Crayola markers. You're going to be seeing me use my nonstick craft mat as a palette. But before I had this craft mat, I used to do this technique using pieces of plastic packaging. Basically, you're just looking for a slick surface where the ink is going to bead up as opposed to dry. And after you find that kind of slick surface, the process is fairly straightforward. All you're going to do is scribble your Crayola marker or any water-based marker you have. You can use the Tombow brush pens. You can use probably pit pens as well. Anything that you have. You're just going to scribble them onto your surface, and I'm picking it up with a water brush and then using it just like regular watercolor paint. This works especially well because I am using watercolor paper, but I've also done it on other surfaces. Just kind of play around and see what works for you. Additionally, if you don't have a water brush and you don't want to buy any because they tend to be on the pricier side, you can use a wet brush or even just spray the ink with water and pick it up with a dry brush. Each of those techniques will likely have slightly different results, but that's part of the joy of mixed media work, at least for me. I always have a lot of fun experimenting and just generally figuring out what I think works. Once I'm done painting this image, that's when I really start thinking that maybe the background paper I picked wasn't necessarily the correct one for this tag. It was probably something about the way that the colors I used to paint looked in contrast to the kind of cream color, but that was when I got the idea to dig out the Recollections paper pad and see if there was something there that would do what I wanted it to. I tossed around a few different ideas, I pulled out two specific sheets of paper, but I ended up going with the purple stars and moons on the black background, just because I liked the way it looked in contrast to the image I had painted. After that, I followed the same technique that I outlined in the beginning of this video to make a tag out of the paper, and this is kind of where what I would call a quote-unquote mistake kind of forms, and that is because I cut my tags slightly too big, and it was a purposeful decision. I had made the choice because I thought that I wanted to show off more of that paper. It kind of felt like a shame to cover a lot of it up, but I just decided to go with it, as I tend to do with my mixed media work. I try not to let myself overthink things, and I have this kind of mindset that I can fix most things if I don't like them. And I actually do end up gluing the image to the tag, even though I felt like something wasn't quite right. I did use a glue stick. I used a Yoohoo, if that's how you say that. I'm not sure that I've ever heard anyone say it out loud. I used one of their glue sticks to put this down on the paper, and then I went in and picked out an embroidery floss that I wanted to use for the strings of the tag. Some of you who have been around since the beginning of this channel, since my first haul video and my second, will be glad to see that I have organized my embroidery floss, and it is not nearly the mess that it used to be. For those of you who haven't been around, I will put a picture up on the screen 
of how horrifying my embroidery floss collection was. So I am much happier with it now and it's much more accessible and I'm glad that I purchased the plastic bobbins that I did. After threading that embroidery floss through, I glued down my little ghost and I'm trying out a few different words as well. I'm trying out a bit from one of my collage sheets where I had a little bracket thinking that maybe that would make the words look better and I'm basically just trying out different things. However, no matter how much experimentation and rearranging I happened to do, I ultimately decided that the main reason I wasn't liking it is because there was too much white space on the top bit of my watercolor paper piece. There was just something odd about the proportions. And here is where I go into trying to quote unquote fix it. And I am gently, gently trying to remove the piece of watercolor paper from the tag without tearing either of them. The paper on the tag did tear just a little bit, but it wasn't a whole type of tear. It was simply pulling up some of the color and I figured I was just going to glue the watercolor paper back down so I wasn't too worried about it. After that was done, I simply cut the top bit off of my watercolor paper, kind of making that white space a little less severe and then I cut the bottom off of my tag as well. Because of the way I had to cut the watercolor paper by folding my ghost over, I ended up creating a fold along its head, and so I just went back in with a Pentel ink brush pen and just colored over it, trying to fill in the little spaces. And this is where the actual assembling of the tag came into place, and I was much happier with it. I glued my images down, and I picked one of the phrases, specifically pick your poison, and I glued that down as well. And to kind of finish off this tag, the white space still felt a little glaring to me, and so I did just a little bit of doodling, where I drew dots around the border and then connected them with a line. For a few final little finishing details, I went back in with the Crayola markers to darken up some of my shadows and a white gel pen to bring out some highlights. And after that was completed, I felt very happy with the way that the tag looked and I decided to call it done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little step-by-step -step tutorial type video. I don't usually go so in-depth into how I created something in my voiceover, so if you're interested in seeing more of this type of content, be sure to let me know. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to be on the lookout for more content featuring my product line in the very near future, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.